I always thought of moths as clumsy flyers, you know, bumping into lights. But then I saw this. This is a sort of a particularly elegant type of moth. That's biologist Tyson Hedrick. I work with Manduca sexta, sometimes called hawk moths or hummingbird moths. So called because they fly and feed a lot like hummingbirds. The moth hovers in front of a flower and it unrolls this long proboscis and starts pulling nectar through what's essentially a straw. A really long straw. So if you can envision trying to, say, drink with a straw as long as your body, you can envision that, yeah, this could be a little bit hard. The moths have to be steady flyers to get food. And to understand just how they keep so steady, Hedrick tries to destabilize them. Sometimes the moth sees the threat and has time to respond. In that case, the moth is deciding to maneuver on its own. And that's not always how the world works. Sometimes, and this goes for moths too, you don't see it coming. The world is full of unexpected events, whether they're gusts of wind or... or getting shot with a tiny modeling clay cannonball. The idea isn't cruel and unusual punishment. It's to see how the moths stabilize when something unexpected happens. And it turns out to be nearly ideal because the moth doesn't really mind. So you say. So we say. We haven't been able to interview it and ask, uh, but we do know that they can learn. And the moth will, in fact, go right back to feeding from the same flower where it was hit by the cannonball before. It's coming back to a plastic flower filled with sugar water. We have essentially the endless bucket of nectar. That's how the moths are lured within shooting range, and then high-speed cameras recording at a thousand frames per second capture the response of the moth. Hedrick wants to know how much of that response. Is the moth actively changing its flight after it's hit by the cannonball? And how much of that stability is due to the moth's regular flapping pattern and body plan? And as you can imagine, this information isn't just useful for biologists, but also for robot builders trying to make small flying robots. To try to figure this out, Hedrick compares the real moth with this. We reconstruct what the moth would have done. As if it had no response, if it just kept flapping as it was. Using either a high-end computational simulation of the aerodynamics of the moth. That's what this is, a computer simulation that maps the flow of air around the moth. Or we take them into a physical model. Like this a set of robot-controlled wings. They're large, slow-moving wings moving in a much more dense fluid. And that lets us slow everything down and measure all the forces carefully. And these models suggest that a lot of what is keeping the moth aloft in the cannonball situation is passive. Flapping flight provides more passive stability as opposed to something like a propeller or a continuously rotating helicopter blade, or even worse, just fixed position wings. But flapping also requires a lot more energy. One way to look at the hawk moth is it's an animal that is using more energy than it needs to, but in so doing, it makes itself a little bit more stable than it would otherwise be. It's insurance, basically. It invests the nectar it slurps up into this flying strategy that helps protect the moth from the unexpected bump in the air. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.